Okay, today we're looking at ionization energy and looking at exactly what it is. You've already looked at the video that talks about the trends a little bit, but we want to take a little bit closer look at what it is and what's happening in it and how it, not how it changes, but how it changes as we go within an element, what kind of things are a little bit different. And our picture here just shows an atom losing an electron. And that's really the whole key as to what ionization energy is. We can see that a definition of ionization energy it is the energy that it takes to remove an electron from an atom. So if you think about that, it's how much energy it takes to take electrons away. And anytime we take an electron away, that means we're always going to be forming a cation. We're always forming a positive ion when we talk about ionization energy. So add energy, pull off the electron, you're left with an cation, a cation, something that's positive. So in general, we can write a general equation for ionization energy, and it looks something like this. A plus IE yields A plus plus the electron. Okay, A can stand for any atom. IE is your ionization energy. A plus is the cation that results, and E minus is the one electron that you get from adding that much energy. So example, our first one is we take sodium. Now sodium if we add 498 kilojoules per mole of sodium atoms, we'll be able to get a sodium ion, sodium cation, plus one, plus an electron. Okay, so it takes that much energy to do that. Um, that's what we call our first ionization energy. The energy it takes to pull off the first electron from an atom. If we're pulling off more electrons, which we can do, we're going to see that that's called the second, third, fourth ionization energy, etc. But we'll come back to that in a little bit. Right now, we're just worried about first ionization energies. In general, though, as we look at our elements, metals are atoms that have less than half full outer shells. Okay, they don't have a lot of valence electrons. So to become stable, they want to lose electrons. Now, it always, always, always takes energy to pull electrons off. And that's because we have to overcome the attraction, the electromagnetic attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. But the less electrons that there are, the less likely it is that they want to hold on to those electrons. They're not going to be held quite as tightly. Plus, we can think about it this as well. Metal atoms, the farther left you go on the table, we saw in a previous trend that the bigger the atoms are. The bigger your atoms are, the further away from the nucleus the electron is, and so the less tightly it's going to be held by the nucleus. So we can see that metals are going to be bigger atoms, so the electrons are further from the nucleus, so they're not as tightly held. And metals like to lose electrons, so they get a full outer shell. It's easier to lose a couple than it is to gain six or seven or five or, or eight, whatever it is. Not eight, seven would be the most are going to gain. So they tend to have low ionization energies. It's not that hard for them to pull electrons away. It's easy to take electrons away. Nonmetals, on the other hand, are going to have high electron ionization energies. And that's going to be because of two reasons. Again, number one, they have greater than half full valence shells. So it's, they'd rather gain some electrons than lose electrons to get that full outer shell. Plus, nonmetals are smaller than atoms, or smaller than metals, and the smaller they are, the closer your outer shell electrons are to the nucleus. The closer you are to the nucleus, the greater the attraction is going to be. So you have higher ionizations. Now, atoms will tend to, especially as we look at metals, because nonmetals are going to be really high ionizations, they're generally not going to lose electrons, even though we can make them. But atoms, are, and particularly metals, are going to lose valence electrons until that outer shell is empty. However many electrons they have, valence electrons they have, they're going to lose them all. And that leaves the next energy level below as being our full energy level, as being the stable configuration. So that may mean, like with our group 1 metals, Group 1 has one valence electron, they're going to lose one electron. But our group 2, the alkaline earth metals, they have two valence electrons, so they need to lose two. What happens when we look to pull off that second electron? Now, in the case of, of sodium, we saw that it took 498 kilojoules to take one electron away from sodium. But if I take the second electron, or try to take the sec second electron away, that's almost 10 times more energy, 45, 60 kilojoules. And the reason that in this case it jumps so much is that we're looking to pull it from that full sub level. Again, sodium only had one electron in its outer shell. Once you take that one away, the next energy level down is the full one, and that's very stable. So it takes a lot more effort to take that away from it. Plus, the electron the atom is much smaller once you take that. The ion is much smaller once you take the electron away, and so again, you have that increased attraction from the nucleus. Okay, 
And so second ionization energy is take the energy to take the second electron off, third is the third, fourth, fourth, etc. And what we see is that it always takes more energy to pull off electrons, successive electrons, than it did the first one. You can see that in this diagram as we look at aluminum. The first electron is 577. The second electron is 1814. The third is 2742. You can, hopefully you see a pattern as to why that is. If you look at the ions that are left behind, you see that each ion is much smaller. The smaller it is, the closer those electrons are to the nucleus, the more energy it's going to take because it's being tightly held. Once you get down here to Al3+, plus at the bottom, now this has gotten rid of all the valence electrons. They're all gone. So now we have just an inner shell electrons, and they're definitely much more tightly held. So this next electron is going to go from 2,700 to over 11,000, almost 12,000 kilojoules. Okay, and that's what we just say here is atoms get, are losing electrons. They're getting smaller. The electrons are left. I feel a higher attraction, more pull from the nucleus, so they're held tighter. It takes more energy to pull them away. That's the same diagram again. Uh, just look out in this case, the fourth electron to pull off of here comes 11,600 kilojoules because it's coming from a full sublevel now. The full outer shell is full. And basically, again, we take a look at this whole process, what's happening. Aluminum has three valence electrons. So I add 577 kilojoules to remove the first one. That gives me Al plus plus electron. I take that Al plus. I add 18, 15 kilojoules to get the second, to Al2+, plus, get a second electron pulled off. And it takes 2740 to pull the third one off to end up with the Al3+. Plus. So all those energies have to be added together to take away all three electrons from an aluminum atom. So if we want to make an aluminum ion, we have to add those three values together. Here is our periodic table, and just showing the trends, which we can basically see what's happening in this case. Uh, we see, and we'll talk more about the last trends in the last video. But you can see as you go across, the ionization energy is increasing. Basically, we kind of see why, because we have nonmetals, so they have high ionization energies because they have greater than half full valence shells, and also that they're smaller, so the electrons are held tighter. Your metals have lower ionization energy. We have less valence electrons, and they're bigger, so the electrons are further from nucleus are not going to be quite as tightly held.